All right. For uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a highlighter here so you guys can. Uh, Guys, I'm recording. I need you to be quiet. And let me do the eraser thingy. All right. And let me do this uh, ink thing. Let's do blue, though. Blue is like the calculus color. All right. Here's what uh, 21 says. It says the viewing window below shows the number of hours of daylight in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, on each day for a typical 365 day period from January 1st until December 31st, answer the following questions by estimating slopes on the graph um, in hours per day. For the purposes of estimation, assume that each day has 30 months. So we have 12 ticks in the horizontal axis. Um, so those represent like the 12 months. And the hours per day, um, if you look at this, the window tells us that the x-axis goes from 0 to 360. So in other words, the very first day is 0, and the very last day way over here in the x direction is 365. Now, it says that the viewing window goes from 0 to 24 in the y direction. That's what these little parameters are. This is the domain, and this is the y or range, right? And so what they're saying is, um, they just track the data. It looks like uh, some. Well, it looks like a normalized bell curve, right? And so for question A, it says, on about what date is the amount of daylight increasing at its fastest rate? So really, when we talk about rate of change, and this is a real-world application, real-world applications look at the rate of change, which is really the slope of the curve. But this is not a straight line. So what we're looking for is an increasing at the fastest rate, or the steepest slope. So I'm not quite sure. Where, you know, Let's talk about that. Where do you think the steepest slope would occur if you were to pick a, a point in time? Right there. At the first, the first long part. Um, right there. Right there. Right where you are. On the third tick. Yeah. No. Right, right here? Yeah. yeah. Now, now how would you guys, what makes you think that? All right, so, so, yeah, so. It's definitely the straightest part. If you get too close to the, the top of it, then it's going to start like. But if you start at the very beginning, then it's going to get, and then it's not going to like shoot straight up. It has to like gradually. When would you so like right in the middle of these two yeah, things. Yeah. So if I drew the tangent line at this point, that's what it would look like. <laughs> and so as we come up the curve, it looks like the slope or the tangent line here would pretty much be the curve, right? So now the question is, what is the rate at that point, if you had to guess? How could I find that rate? Well, you would kind of take marks divided by 3 by 365, so then you should take mark as 30, so that means it's 90. And then on the side, you would take marks by 24, which means they're in increments of 3, so then you would divide 90 by 6. So what would you guess it is? So how many hours? Um, it's 15 hours. Well, see, I, I, you're, you're on the right path, but let's, let's just slow down a minute, pump our brakes, and think this through, okay? The question they're asking us is, about what date is the amount of daylight increasing at the fastest rate? In other words, today I have... Um, two hours, three hours of sunlight, but tomorrow I'll have a dramatically more amount of sunlight. So we believe that it's this point right here, and I would tell you guys that yes, you're, it, it, that's about right. It's between, it's between three and four. But my question is, is how do we approximate how many, how much of an increase it is? 
because the slope of the curve tells us how much of an increase. In other words, how much more daylight will I have tomorrow? See, if I pick the day... Definitely in March. So, so let me let me let me help you guys out with this. Shh. Listen to me carefully. I, I, yeah, I, I hear your question, but just listen to me here. I know, but I might answer your question. I gotta. I want to help you guys, guide you guys towards the right answer. The truth is, is that probably the steepest increase is either about here or here, somewhere in here, right? Yes. Okay. So if we say that this is where the steepest increase is. That's about one-fourth through the year. So probably around March sometime is when the daylight increases the most, maybe maybe even April 1st, okay? So now, what is the rate in which the daylight increases is the slope. So what we could do, and if you notice, Mr. Adams has picked two points on the line. I just need to calculate the slope between these two points. Or I could pick this point here and this point and then just calculate the slope between these two points. So if I go over this way and I go over this way, that's my rise over run, how would I calculate that? Yes? Is January the first tick mark or the axis? That's this is January 1st right here. Okay. So this would be February 1st. March 1st, and so what we're looking at is April 1st, right? Question. Now we're assuming that the f between each tick mark is 30, days. is 30 days, but really, what's 365 divided by 12? Not 30. It's like 30.4. Yeah, like well, I, how many tick marks are there? There's, yeah, it's 30. There's Wait, let's count. So I go 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. Twelve. So what? It's about thirty days, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be my rise or run. Run. My run. Now the rise is twenty-four hours, and I have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and I think I think she said that right. Didn't you say at each tick mark is like three hours? Yeah. So my rise over run. In other words, I'm going to say that m is equal to my rise over run. What is my rise? Eight. I don't know. Well, thirty. <clears throat> no, your, no, your rise, rise, rise is three. Three. Because you, you just go up one tick mark. Oh, for the 24th. So now that means that my slope is 1 over 10. Now how do I write that? What does the rise represent? Rise hours. Per hours. Per day. Per 10 days. Per days. Wait, why is it Are we supposed to be because there's ten? Oh, one over ten. Oh, like, what if, now, what's this as a decimal? Point one. Point one. So if we if we want to make this a unit rate, so to make this a unit rate, it's actually an increase of point one hours per one day. So what that means is, on April 1st, if I have, and it looks like, how many tick marks are there? There's one, two, three, four tick marks. So on April 1st, I'll have 12 hours of sunlight. The very next day, I'll have 12 hours and 0.1 of an hour, which is actually six minutes, right? 
So in one day, I'll have an increase of six minutes, which is the most increase I'll have, and that occurs between April 1st and April 2nd. So then when you do six over 24, this one's... Hmm? Well, in your back of the book, they they did they chose a different point to approximate, and they got one over six. That's what I got too. They still yeah. Isn't that still? Um, well, we're approximating. We don't have the exact value, but that's close enough. I got. I got. Um, one, six. one six would be point one six seven. Yeah, that's what I did. I did 15 over 90 days. 15 hours over 90 days is one sixth per day. You did, wait, wait, how'd you do 15? Well, yeah, it should oh, be 15 over 120. Oh, yeah, well, but you're you're choosing a different point. You're choosing this point here, right? Yeah. Well, I, no, 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 April 1st is 15 over 120. So did you do the change from like the first day until that day? I did, yeah, I could have until 15 and then April is 90 days. Wait, isn't that measuring the slope of that entire curve, not like at that point? Yeah, right. And, and that's what I'm trying to make. So, so, so let, let me just restate that because we are recording this and I'll post this on YouTube so everybody can, can read it. We're estimating the slope, okay? And so when we're estimating the slope, we can arbitrarily choose any two points that we want. Now, if you look at the graph and we go from this point to this point, what did you get, 30 over 90? I got 15 over 90. 15 over 90. And when you reduce that, that reduces down to one over six. Now, what, what Mr. Adams chose was this point and this point, which is one over 10. Now, the back of the book will say that the answer is one over six, but it's an estimate. Truthfully, what we would need to do is we would want to take the derivative of this curve at the point um, when x equals, what is that, 120? Right? Yeah. And, and so, if you, if you, so if you do this point and this point, you'll get a little bit different answer. If you do this point and this point, you'll get a different answer. If you do this point and this point or this point and this point, the answers will vary. Okay? But what is, so, so if you do 1 over 6, what's that as a decimal? 0. 0.167, right? It's actually 0. 0.16 repeating, isn't it? So it's, if you do the math, it might be, what is that, about 8 minutes, 9 minutes? So one, one estimate would give you uh, six minutes. The other estimate would give you like nine minutes of an increase. Wait. Now, what purpose does that serve? I have no idea. Almanacs. How do you think, have you ever watched the Weather Channel and they tell you what time the sun sets and what time it rises? Yeah. 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 There it is. So how do they know how much it increases from one day to the next? Calculus. Calculus. Now the old al almanacs used to just measure it every day, and they would take averages and stuff, but by using calculus it's a little more... So, so here's the point that I'd really like to make, and it's a valid point. If you The book did it one way, and some of you guys chose to do it the way the book did, and you chose a different point than Mr. Adams did. That's perfectly okay, because we're making estimations. The main thing is that we could tell by looking at the curve where the steepest slope is. What's nice is through calculus we could support that algebraically, numerically. We can find a value and attach it to it. Ideally what we want to do is take the derivative at this point. Truthfully, I haven't taught this to you guys yet, but that's also where the second derivative is equal to zero. This is a point of inflection where the concavity changes. And I'll show you guys that in a couple of sections. But we need to know that this is, this is the point where it's the steepest. And that we know that we can make a secant line at this point and any point close to it. And we'll get about the same answer. 
Okay, does that make sense to you guys? So if you have point one or if you have point one six, Mr. Adams is okay, and we'll count them both as being good answers. Let's move on to point uh, uh, question B. Do there appear to be days in which the rate of the amount of change in daylight is zero? So what do you think that is? Where there's no change whatsoever. The point right at the top. Right here, because we're looking at the slope of the tangent line. And if I were to draw a tangent line, this is where there would be no change. Mm -hmm. Now, that seems to be right in the middle of the year, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we were to approximate, that could be... It's like August. Or July 1st. July. Yeah. We'd really have to get in there and look at the numbers to figure out exactly which day it is. But, I mean, if we're assuming that each month is 30 days and each tick mark represents the first of the month, blah, 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 it'd be about July 1st. The beginning of what? So like, like January. January. That's right. Like it's starting out. Kind of well, it would be it would be both because yeah. you have twenty-four hours. Oh, oh, you know what? Look, if I draw a tangent line here, yeah. and if I draw a tangent line here, so January. yeah. So January and December would it only be January because that's January first and July. Yeah, you could say December 31st if you wanted to, that's, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Is the top dotted line, is that 21 or 24 hours? Uh, no, this is 24. Because the window is 0 to 24, so down here is 0. And this top line right here? Okay, so it's 24. That's, that's 24, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's a second part to that question. The second part says, if so, which ones? And it says July 1st and January 1st. And then part C, oh, I have the answers right there because I used my teacher book. Part C says, on what dates is the rate of change for the daylight positive or negative? Well, um, basically, from January 1st until July 1st, it's positive because we have a positive slope here. And then from July 1st until December, it's a negative slope, right? Does that make sense? Okay. And that's pretty much it.